Hi and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing the Faber Castle oil pastels. So here uh, we have about 15 colors inside this and I got this for INR 52. So I'm quite excited to try this out. This was for 55 in a store nearby. I got it for 52. You can figure out what uh, price you can get it for. So this is pretty exciting. It tells you what are the different things that you can do with it, like blending and gradation, color mixing, and then I don't know how to pronounce this. So I think it's graffito or scraffito. I don't know. So um, this basically means that you first color with the light, bright colors of choice and cover it completely with a dark color. And then you scratch patterns on it with a scratch tool in the pack. So this is exciting. I'm going to try this out and um, see. So there is a scratch tool inside. Let's unbox this. So here it says push here to slide out tray. Pull to open. I, I really like when they have packaging details like this. So push here. So when I push over here, it slides out. This is very nice. So this is a scratchy tool. Um, I think in my earlier videos, you would have seen that these kind of things come in a lot of oil pastel boxes. So I'm going to unbox this and try this out. So far, the colors look very nice. They look very creamy. You can see it's already um, bleeding out. So this is the scratching tool. It has a few types over here. One is the sharp cross surface. One is you have like a pointed area. You have this bend. So you can basically scratch in different ways here. You can create a pattern. This is also for creating a pattern. You can see here they've created a few patterns using these tools, especially the edges here. So what are the other things inside this pack? They have this art contest. So you can check out the details for that. I'm sure they will have some, um, I think, timeline and stuff. And so you can just check out about this if you're interested. So I'm going to now do um, a small swatch sheet of all of these colors. So we'll start with the first one. <laughs> it's a little hard to take out. So a little bit of it has come in my nails. Um, it's pretty like sticky. So far that that's the first thing that I have felt. It's quite sticky. Um, so oil pastels, paper castle, this is the red one. The size is good, compact. It's nice to hold. So let's try out. It's extremely smooth, very, very smooth. So with very little pressure itself, I'm able to create a color. So before the placing the first one, I'm going to pick out the second one because it's a little difficult to take them out. Let me zoom in and show you the different colors. This is the orange. This is if I like put very less pressure, I mean almost close to no pressure at all. This is the yellow ochre. Next, we will be going to the lemon yellow. The colors look very good so far. Really easy to use, simple. Uh, it does come off a little bit. But in most oil pastels, you will find this. The colors are so bright, very, very vibrant. I like that. I'm moving on now to the next set of colors. We are now going to the dark blue. So it does tell all the names, okay? This is the deep blue. Uh, there was the light blue and I'm just trying to see what are the names of here. I have a little hard to move this around. This was the emerald green. This was the light green, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, orange, red. And here is the deep blue. I like the color of the blues that are there in this set. Oops. The next one is their violet. Moving on to their pink. Let's see what they've called it. They've called it the light pink. So it's interesting um, that they have a small kit and they decided to include the pink. This is a very useful and a nice color to have. This is their brown. And yes, they've called it as brown. 
Next is the peach. I like that they call it peach and not flesh tint. I remember when I was growing up, this color was only called as flesh tint, which I think is kind of wrong. Uh, this is not the only color of the flesh. This is their white. Normally, I don't really swatch white, but I want to figure out how it is. You can see there's like a lot of um, particles which do come out. Um, it is common in oil pastels, but I personally don't like it if it comes out too much. Um, you also have to have like a fixative that you need to use to like, you know, make sure that this doesn't create a problem. Um, this is the cool gray. And I'm trying out now the last one, which is their black. Oh, I love the black. So here are the 15 colors of uh, the Faber Castell oil pastels. I love them. It's very, very nice, so smooth, really good to use. These are just the swatches. We are going to try out the different techniques um, from this, which is we're going to try the blending and gradation. We will try the color mixing, where we will mix two colors to create a new one. And then we'll also try with the scratch one. So let's move on and do that. So if you notice the color palette, it's pretty bright. Okay. So I'm going on to the next one right now. So if I turn, there is not a, like you cannot really see much. This is a Bristro sketchbook that I'm using right now for this. And I think it's pretty good. It's not an issue. Um, so the first thing we're going to try is blending. So you will be blending light to dark colors of the same family to create a little bit of depth in the painting. So we'll start off, I will use the light green and the dark green for this. So this is a little hard for me, but um, I'm sure you will figure out your way out of this. I also don't want to like um, make this table a little dirty. I'm going to try and use this to pull it out. Yeah, oops. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section if you have a solution for this problem or if you also end up doing the same thing as me and you know, it's kind of hard. So I'm going to create like a leaf. Okay. So you can blend the dark and the light colors. I'm seeing if they have any specific instructions. Blend light to dark colors of the same family. Okay. So I'm going to have like light green on the top and I'm going to have the darker green towards the bottom. So in some areas, I'm going to have it um, as a single layer. In some, I'll just add the layer on top of the light green. So when you do it on top, you can see that it gets a little lighter. I also am changing my pressure accordingly. I'm going to put a little bit of this green on it so they can blend. I think it's very good. Um, the blending quality is nice. Of course, it's not like 100% super smooth, but that's okay. Like it still gives you a very good feel of your oil pastels and uh, in general how it works. So I think if you think about that, it's very nice. I'm now going to try with a little bit of darker blue on it. And this is a little problematic. So you can see that I'm putting darker blue, the green is coming off. So you will need to understand your colors and figure out what works well on which, what are the colors that don't gel well together, where you're not able to mix them. So this is something that you will find out with a lot of um, you know, working along with it. The next thing is color mixing, where you're mixing two colors. So I'm going to try the orange and the white. Uh, similar to what they have over here, we'll probably also add another color and see. Like what if we mix two different colors, what happens then? I just try to remove that. Okay, so a little bit of orange and I'm taking some white. This is so good. It's so smooth. I love the use of the white. Um, so this is a very common way of um, using the oil pastels by a lot of artists. So they would use white or any other, you know, neutral color to mix it all together. So this is a nice thing to do. You can see if this works for you. I'm going to try a little bit of gradation over here. Gradation is when you're using the same family of colors. This is why I'm using like a slightly darker tone. So red, orange is by mixing yellow and red, which is why I've used red over here. 
Now, one thing you'll have to be careful about when you're using your white is you already mixed it once. So you have to clean it before you try to mix a different color. For example, if I put the same thing on top of the leaf right now, you will see the problem. Orange has come on. Okay, so that's a big problem. You need to make sure you don't do that. The next thing we're going to do is use this and create some shapes. So in, in the instructions, it tells you that use a light color and then add a darker color on top and then you can remove it. Before doing that, we'll see if we can create some things on top of this. This is very nice. Lovely this is, this time. See if something comes out of this. So because this is not got like too much of blending, so you know, there's not much you can see in this. Um, so I'm going to put light pink and then black on top. Okay, so let's have just the pink or maybe even a light green next to it or a lemon yellow maybe next to it. Whichever color comes out of the box for me. Okay, so what they are saying is on top of this, put a dark color like a black. I think we're going to put a black on this and then we will use the scratch tool. So I have never tried something like this before. So I hope this works. Okay, so time to now see if this really works. Oh, this is amazing. Can you see this? This is so good. Create a slightly bigger shape to show you guys. This is very, very good. I think this is going to be one of my favorite techniques now. <laughs> um, this reminds me of like those scratch books, which will have like some color at the bottom and it will be completely black and when you scratch it you would get really interesting shapes like this so this is a definite win for me i love um, how this is able to do this different technique because if you're going to be making an art piece and you let's say you want to uh, make the clothes of a girl and then you want to add some patterns then this is an amazing technique to use so absolutely love it so what we're going to do right now is we're going to create a small little art piece and we're going to use our colors and we're going to use the different techniques and see how we can make a scene or an entire picture out of it. All right, so this is what we're going to do right now. I'm going to draw a few fruits. Um, if you've seen a lot of my videos, you would know that I love drawing fruits, especially with different kinds of oil pastels and crayons. It's so much fun to work with them because you get also a large surface area to work on and fruits are so vibrant and so beautiful very very colorful but if you want me to do like different kinds of things and you feel like you're bored of seeing fruits in my channel you can also like leave comments over here so i i can consider and i can change a few things in that i've got an apple i've got an orange but i'm going to do something different this time i'm also going to use like different techniques and um try to like add some fun elements with it i'm going to create a pear here Okay, and um, let's create a fun basket, like a plate, I think not like a basket and we'll create some patterns on top of this. So let's start off with the pair first. I want to go from this to here um, because I feel like my hands will get very dirty. So it's, it's fine, like a lot of times you should go from left to right rather than right to left. Uh, but in this case, I feel like going from right to left today. So I'm going to do that. We'll start taking a couple of colors and white. We definitely need the white. We'll use the brown for a few details. So I'm going to use very, very light yellow first. So the light is coming from this side. So that is what you need to take care of. So in the beginning, you wouldn't know about light and shadow. Don't worry too much about it. Just create the way that you can and um, don't worry too much if you go wrong. I'm going to get a tissue here to fix this. Because otherwise my pear is going to become all orange. It's still not a bad idea because your fruits, especially the pear, will have like multiple... Um, if it's very ripe, it will have like an orange tint on it. But I don't feel like doing that. 
So after giving the white, I feel like it's become very dull, which is why I'm enhancing it by adding some deeper colors on it. Okay, a little bit of darker green for the shadow here. So sometimes if it doesn't blend, use the lighter color to blend in, in that area. So I'm finding blending a little difficult when I'm using multiple layers. So I'm just going to remove this dust. I don't want to remove it on the table, so I'm just going to remove it outside it. You just blow it away. Don't try to touch it. So if you touch it, what happens? The color may come out. It's not coming out too much. I'm really happy about that. Um, but don't take the chance. And for the pair, you will also be using a lot of colors. So sometimes it has like these um, dots on top. So, so this is the thing that I have found with it so far that layering too many layers is a little hard in this. It's okay. So next thing is the orange. And when I have a nice happy orange. So this was one of the techniques that I really wanted to do where I have like the entire base color done from a single one and very very little bit of red. Not too much. Use some white to give some highlights here. So this is interesting. I am not at all able to go on top of the orange color for this time. I'm finding it a little hard. I literally had to remove, I think, the base orange to get this out. So these are a few things. It's not a problem. I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker. You just have to figure out uh, how the colors work. So each oil pastel set will be very different in terms of different brands that we use. So you have to start understanding the colors and then you have to start changing your technique. So adapt accordingly. You can go from light to dark or dark to light. There is no hard and fast rule. So if you notice over here, I left the gap for the bark of the stem. A little bit of red over there. I'm going to use some yellow. So some colors are extremely bright and it's very easy to blend them. Um, some colors require a little bit more work. So brown, I'm finding it a little hard. It's not able to um, overlay on top of some base colors. So I have to now take the black to add in some darker shade. So it's very, very dark. So I'll be using the red to blend this in. So if you see, when I mix the black and the red, I get like a dark brown. Oops, my, my leaf became too big, very, very big. Now time to do this. Um, I want to leave the inside part a little white and here we'll create some patterns on the dish. I'm going to have with a single color base and then I'll add some black on top and we'll create some shape. We'll create some like interesting patterns, you know, maybe not a shade. Using some green for the inside to add some shadows. So let's imagine if this is like a white base inside the bowl. And we have shadow here. Let's add black. I've also not like blown away all of the extra residue, which is why it might be a little confusing when you look at it right now. You won't be able to see the entire picture. Um, before adding these patterns, I will just remove all these excess bits. Again, please make sure you don't use your hand to do that. If you do, then there are chances that you may dam damage your entire artwork. I'm just going to take it outside. Okay. 
now let's create so this is also another problem just be little careful when you are using your oil pastels this is a very common thing to happen so don't worry you know it's you're just having fun and that is what you should be doing this is my absolute favorite thing i love this so i'm trying out like random things i'm not sticking with any specific pattern This is lovely. It's so good. Let's see what this thing does. <laughs> this is nice too. This is really good. So um, you'll have to clear these off as well. So as for these um, oil pastels, I do like them. I think they are. Perfect beginner friendly. Uh, that way, it's it's if you've never tried oil pastels and you want to get your hands on something which is also budget friendly and not too expensive, then this is a definitely a good one. You should consider getting this. It's handy. It's portable. It has 15 colors and you can mix and match your colors. You can create amazing things with it. So that way, um, definitely a yes. It does get a little messy. Okay, so be prepared for that. So if you're going to get this for kids. Make sure that you have like um, apron for them or uh, you, you, you like put, put something at the base like either a cutting mat or newspapers or something where your tables don't get dirty. Your hands also will tend to get a little messy. So um, just be a little wary of that. Know that this is going to happen. It's not at all a problem. Lot of art supplies are like that and oil pastels are supposed to be that way. Before I end the video, I wanted to give you guys a small tip. If you are looking to store these um, artworks, so right now if I'm going to be closing this book, the colors will go on top of each other. I will try and show you the earlier page. So you can see that it has come on this one, okay? So you can try to protect it by either putting like a butter sheet, cut it to this size, or you can buy a fixative. So there's something called as fixative for oil pastels. It will be like a spray can. So get that and then use it. But if you're going to be around small kids and small kids are going to be using this, then you don't need to use the fixative. It's okay. If this is a practice book, let it go one on top of another. It's fine. Take pictures if you want to. You can even scan the pictures and keep it on your drive. Or you can use the next best option, which is the butter sheet. So you can also get a sketchbook, which has butter sheets in between each uh, page so you can try and see if there are special oil pastel books like that and um, use that for this purpose all right see you bye bye